All right, guys, I'm back here over at Casones RV in Mesa, Arizona, and I'm trying to help them finish up this Tahoe fifth wheel. A few videos ago, it seems like a few more than a few more videos ago, uh, I pointed out the rot on the front cap of this, and between the, the owner of the Tahoe and Casones RV, they came up with a plan. I'll, I've been trying to document it. It's been a very long ordeal. I'm here to help them, and we're going to get this done. Let's take a look. Caught them working pretty hard over there. You notice there's a, um, a big wall right there. It goes to this uh, 2000, we're calling it a 2003 Tahoe Transport fifth wheel. So it's a toy hauler. And there's a little bit of water damage there, guy. So here we go, the Tahoe's finally getting rebuilt. I know everybody's worried about that. Let's see how they did. There's the old uh, rotten blue one that was there. Of course, somebody already fixed this before. I don't know if you guys remember, it was all loose down here. So they went ahead and they reframed the bad section where the uh, outside wall meets the front wall. But there's uh, apparently enough good wood right in here that we're fine. I'm sure this is going to be, like most things, a compromise between what would be the best option to rip off and rebuild the whole thing and what's the most a cost effective option which is to remove what's really rotten and bad and will cause problems and go from there so this will be going back together getting rid of all that water damage and then they'll go ahead and make sure that it don't leak again that's the plan right yeah it's good plan i like that plan <laughs> what we got in there is it just phylon or what PWP backer? You just can't make up words. Well, no, those are actually letters. <laughs> PWP and Luan. Okay. Very exciting. So this shouldn't have the wrinkly problem? Did not. She already ordered it like this. Where'd it come from? It came from All right. Hemet Valley. Valley. Alright, so it's already got the file on. Underneath, bonded to the Luan. And it's got a... Uh, Chad called it PPD? PPP? PP. What'd you call this plastic? Uh, PRP. PRP. So <laughs> you had to make this up for you. That's a good idea. Did you already reframe the front? Yeah. Oh, okay. I marked it out where it needs to be. Comes the new sheet. Well engineered and laminated. What's the plan, Stan? Yeah, make sure you have enough to wrap around up on top. Well, that was uneventful, huh? Let's run the screw in at the bottom, line it up, put the staples in, and we're gonna work that uh, excess out all the way to the top where Micah is. But yeah, it's already been engineered. So manufacturers would have used like a chipboard, it looks like a cereal box, and it falls apart. And there's gonna be a nice, like a composite Luan that they're using on the sidewalls now. I'll write it right there if you know what it is. So it won't be water damage or an issue on that. So now we can bend it around that curve there. I think so. You just gotta put some screws in or staples in. But yeah, if they don't have a, a backer behind Phylon, it'll just tear really easily. 
we take a look up here, you can see there's another bend. There's going to be that composite Luan again. And there's just going to be a reinforcing strip of uh, pylon. All right, well, that's all secured. Looking really good right there. Before we secure this side down, we'll go ahead and uh, put some sealant underneath there to try to eliminate this problem in the future because that was the biggest issue. You can see the water was getting back there, if you guys remember. So we'll get some sealant under there, secure this down, and then put the molding back down and screw it down. And I think this job will be nice. You guys did a good job rebuilding that uh, on a dime. Thank you. Hey, while we're up here, we should take a look at the roof coating that everybody wants to put on. Look at that, it peels off really easily. Oh, it's steep. Well, the idea is to prolong the life of a roof that's at the end of its life. It's not something you're supposed to do routinely. But for whatever reason, some people think that coating the roof is what you do routinely. End of life, that's the only time you'll really be doing this. That's why I don't trust these uh, coats. Pull that whole thing off. It did work, didn't it? You want to mark it? You want to mark it? Well, I mean, it pretty much lines right on. All right, yeah. Mark it. Only geez. A red marker. Yeah. Are you a teacher now? Yeah. Yeah. Someone's gotta be. Here you go with that ProFlex here. That's a good product. Don't be shy. With it. Bring it out like all the way around. Yeah. I mean you can be a little shy. Otherwise Chad will have to go get another tube. Yeah, don't be That'll be the primary seal. It's important that people realize all the seal on top is a lap seal that's supposed to be flashing. The primary seal is underneath all the flanges. I think you made a video about that once or twice. Once or twice. See, if the vent's know. leaking, putting more stuff on top doesn't fix the problem. It's a band-aid. You need to find out why it's leaking. Yeah. Proflex might be overkill. Constance. It'll be a good adhesive too. It's not underkill. You made it. We can start at the middle and work our way to the sides. Mm -hmm. Those screws are definitely long enough to bite into what we're trying to go into. Uh, you pushing hard? Yep. Or hardly pushing. <laughs> See, these are inch and five eight screws. You know, the factory would use used uh, one inch screws. Yeah, sometimes you need more than that. I don't work at the factory or anything, but. <laughs> And worst part about all this is, what? there's a plastic film in this whole cap. I know, it's not that bad. We got Chad on the ladder there, pushing the wall towards there to eliminate any slack or bubbles in the front. And there's actual framing right here. We're not just going into the deck, we're actually going into the framing behind the deck. That's why you want long screws. Fantastic. All right. That was a good measurement you guys gave him at Valley. Right where the curves were. They made it perfectly. They did a good job. So, there's still... So, before they put any molding on, there's a clear plastic protector that has to come off. You gotta make sure you do that. Otherwise, uh, you're not feeling anything. And this stuff turns a, into a nightmare in the sun. Make one of those satisfying videos. Ooh, it's so pretty. See something even more satisfying? Don't do it. Well, there it is, a brand new front cap. You guys did a good job. Made that radius perfectly. No bubbling. No deformation. That looks brand new. Should make it another 20 years, Chad. All right, guys, we're back over at Cassone's again, and we're gonna finish up this Tahoe. Rather than using the old moldings, we're gonna use new ones. They're a little bit wider, so it should work out better. It's just gonna go on the corners. Overall, there's not too much to show. We'll bend them to shape to 
get around the radiuses right here, then we'll put the putty on. Don't put the putty on first because it makes the uh, process a lot more difficult. I'll try to show you one and then we'll hopefully cut to the end. So the first step is going to be to form that molding around this uh, two radiuses. I've pulled this trim out of the way so we can get to it because uh, it's going to go behind that molding. Sometimes you have to hit it with a hammer a lot, put some cuts in it. This has got a thicker, so this has a thicker leg on it or a wider one, so it's going to be even harder to bend. There's actually a lot of strength in that design. First thing I need to do is put it on the roof, screw it down, that way it can start forming where the uh, bend's going to be. I'm using inch and five eighths truss screws, they're wood screws, or last screws, I guess, is what these are, right? Yeah. Uh, you want something long. Anything shorter than an inch and a half is not going to grab too much. We want them to go all the way into whatever framing is there. So we get that edge put on there and then using this long end as a uh, lever, we might be able to start bending it around. It'll start to pucker at the bend. Uh, that's why we have a dead blow to kind of massage it. The factories have forming tools. I don't have forming tools. And they do make forming tools but they mar it up anyway, so why well, use a forming tool that's gonna mar it up? Okay, well, with it fairly securely anchored at the top right here, now we can start bending it down. You can let go. It'd probably be too long, we'll have to cut it eventually and hook the ground, but I'd rather, hold up. So you can see it already started to pucker right there. Let me see if we can't massage this around a little bit. I'll do my best to massage that kink out, but this one's just going to be too big. I'll have to cut that and make it a little uh, flat for it. It's just, this leg is just so much longer. So this would be the original one. You can see how short that one was. And even the factory, they had a pucker in it too. So I'm not too surprised by that. So let me just do that real fast. What we really care about is that. The only thing we really care about is when we cut this, we want the top to overlap the bottom. That way water still sheds off of it. All right, so just a little notch like that. We'll try to bend it around and try to form it. And this uh, edge down a little bit. That way I can overlap it on top with the other one. That'll get it in place. Um, we're definitely down here going to have to do the same thing again. That's a very tight turn. So. Now I know maybe this doesn't look the best. It's a little bit um, janky looking. But I know a few things. One, all I really care is that we're securing the front cap on, making it tight. But this piece is going to be going right there anyways. It's going to hide everything. So we'll be okay. It'll be, it'll look good. Let me just put the rest of the screws in up to that point, then we'll have to cut and do the same thing. I didn't point it out. But you should be able to see that framing. You guys remember? These are what we want the screws to go into. Is this frame right there. When we're putting the screws in, it's good to put them kind of at an angle going in. You don't go if you go straight in. Sometimes it misses that, moves to the outside and goes in between the sidewall and the framing, sidewall and the framing, and uh, that doesn't hold on to anything. So hopefully you can see that I've angled it away from the sidewall and towards the inside. Should be able to feel it grabbing on. If you don't feel that, it didn't do any good. Just take it off. You'd probably be surprised how many uh, extra holes are in these moldings, even from the factory, because they didn't find anything. All right, so I made a mark right there, which is the peak of that sidewall bend. So what I'm going to do is transfer that about straight up right there. And we'll cut that. Try to take it almost all the way up right there. Okay. You want to start bending it? Okay. I think that's going to work out pretty well. And now the overlap is on the outside so if water's coming down it's not going behind the molding, it's going over the top of it, just like flashing wood. Because, you know, this is basically flashing. All right, so I've trimmed off my excess here so I can get an idea where to cut it. Just cut that right there. And then I'll actually be done forming this piece of molding. I take it back off again and we'll put, put putty on it. If you try to do it with putty on it at first, 
it's just going to fight you the entire time. The putty gets in the way, it sticks where you don't want it to stick. And so you have to take the putty off and re-putty it anyway. So. All right, with that cut, now I'll just take all the screws back off again. Take this off, put putty on there, and we'll put it back on one last time. Put the putty tape on, we're putting it right in the middle where the holes are. I don't know if you can see right where the holes are. I'm not going to try to get to the corner because this is the ceiling surface. That's where we want the ceiling to actually be. The screws are going to compress the putty. If we put it in the corners, it won't compress the corners. It'll just be there sitting, doing nothing. But I will likely run a bead of sealant on the corner on the wall. Alright, we're just adding a bead of 100% silicone on that inside corner so that when it gets screwed down, it'll smush that a little bit and keep it from allowing water to go from the sidewall down to the front into where the screws are. That's the plan. We will address one more problem. You can see the rubber right there is torn. And we want to try to protect that a little bit. So we will be using some roof repair tape right there. I did make sure I didn't call it a turnabon. I know this isn't a turnabon. I don't want to upset all the fanboys. So we'll get some a turnabon layered on there and then we'll go ahead and put the trim on. I know that roof repair tape is something I don't like, but in this instance, it's repairing a, a tear. And that's what I like roof repair tape for. All right. so. The molding's going to hide most of this tape, but now we, we're keeping the water from getting underneath right there. Alright, so I've got those screws in, they're starting to ooze out. Now I can cut off the extra roof repair tape on the top here and on the side here. Should look pretty pristine. The side still, I'll leave on until I put the molding on, and then we'll cut it off underneath, just like we would a rubber roof. Alright, so all I have to do is, i got my special bone windshield tool. Let's get that off. You can use a razor blade or a knife, but it'll mar up the surface. We don't want that. All right, well, that's pretty much how the process is going to be for the other side, too. Let me go ahead and just knock that side out. And we'll get it to the point where I just have to put the insert and seal it up, and we'll take a look at it when it's done. I mean, it's really just the same thing all over again, just on the other side. I do have to make a little bit of a change on the bottom molding, but other than that, we should be done here shortly. The next step is going to be this vinyl insert. I think this is a uh, one inch vinyl insert. The tab should be up. I'll just go ahead and unroll it. That was fast. I found the easiest way to put this in. You just get one, uh, one end in, the other end in. I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in it. Just like that. And then usually if you just get one end going, Just like that, and you get a nice bone like this, you just roll it in. So it can be done. Let me just get that done the rest of the way. All right, I'll just cut that, put the screw in. All right, so I got that last piece of trim on this side. You have putty on the back side. I won't trim this roof repair tape until the trim goes on. That way that roof repair tape's underneath this molding just like the rubber roof would have been. And for the most part, except for that dent right there, most of this hammered area is pretty well covered. Like I said, it's aluminum, it's got that longer leg on it. You can't do too much about it, but this longer leg needed to be there because we're trying to hold that sidewall in a little bit more because there's quite a bit of rod on there. Okay, I just need to trim out under here. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to get some mineral spirits or some solvent to clean off the tape, which is, of course, why I don't really like tape, because it leaves a big residue. I don't know if you can see on this side. So I have to get all that stuff off, but we'll get that cleaned up. Clean off the putty. Get some uh, non-sag die core to cap that area off. One last piece of trim. And then we just seal it up really well. All right, so we're just using... 100% silicone, white, standard stuff at uh, the home store. Now there's not much of a lip here. It's very difficult to make this look good. All you do is try your best.
and I get a lot of questions about what I'm using. I just use glass cleaner. Sometimes scrubbing bubbles works fine. Uh, the biggest key to keeping a good bead that I've found is you just wipe off the excess a lot. Don't try to drag it the entire length. do is one more pass at least the opposite way and then wipe off whatever doesn't look very good like right there all right just about 15 more of these little things to seal this is basically just liquid flashing to help uh, redirect water so it doesn't try to go under the molding it just goes you know, down the front and all the way down. Now, on the sides right here, where the molding meets the sidewall and the roof, this is a rubber roof, so we're using uh, Dicor non-leveling, non-sag sealant. And then, of course, on the top, we're going to use Dicor self-leveling. I like to do it in stages, so I like to start at the bottom, work my way up, so that when the silicone edge is right there, the die core is going to go over the top of the silicone rather than butting up against that. So we're creating a, a shingle right there. Same with the non-leveling sealant right there. I like to do that first, bring it over the top, and then put the die core on top. Okay, I forgot to uh, seal up the last part. I just noticed when I was filming that. I also like to fill the corners right here with sealant. That way it takes the place of water so water doesn't puddle right at these corners where all these... To be completely honest, the, the weak points of the whole roof structure is going to be to keep water from puddling right there. Same on the front. I did go underneath at the front of here mostly because I want to give this a fighting chance because we saw there was some damage behind the wall right there. And we're doing the best we can without rebuilding the entire trailer or wasting his money, putting too much money into it. Again, all this is doing is just filling the uh, area at the corners right here. And all this stuff is, is Die core self leveling. It's, it is sealant, but it's going to be used as flashing to redirect water. All right, and I think, guys, with that, this job is finally done. I mean, I it's been such a long time to be honest. I kind of hardly remember what it looked like before, other than it was really bad. Uh, hopefully, it's turned out okay. And let's take a look at it. So I don't know if you guys remember, that side wall was loose. Uh, the front was completely rotten, especially on the driver's side. And the material, actually I still have the material. It's right down here. You can see all the rot that's still on it. So this was a pretty big job. You now the uh, customer's been pretty patient. Uh, unbelievably patient, to be honest. It was just a fine line of spending way too much money on this fifth wheel or putting it back together and still spending a lot of money putting it back together the way it was. So you might as well get it done at least as right as it can be without totaling the, the fifth wheel. Now we did get this front cap wall material made up professionally by Hemet Valley in California. It shouldn't have the same issues that a lot of these Phylon front and rear caps are having. Overall, I'd say it's at least 50% better than what it was. I know there's still a lot of damage in the sidewall, in the floor, and on the, uh, the roof. We tried to address a little bit of the, roof, or, or the torn roof and try to keep water out of it as best as we can. Uh, in this situation, I'd probably recommend you kind of keep the front up a little bit, maybe so it's not downhill so the water doesn't try to run into the front cap. But we, I think 
I think we did our best to rebuild this as best and inexpensively as possible. Uh, I hope that helped other people out. Like I said, it's been a very, very, very long ordeal. And I think the owner's gonna be happy to have their trailer back. And I think Casones will be happy to have their bay back. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. There it goes. It's been a long time coming, but it's moving. It's getting out of that bay. Looks good, especially from this distance. So, slide it in there so where you can hold it kind of. Let me get this out of the way so you have a little bit more room, huh? Okay, I feel like I'm gonna drop it, so I don't know if you guys have to hold on it. That's why I won't. Okay, now I know. All right, into it. I would have done that too. That one's trash now. Make a slip about 37 times. Watch your fingers. Thomas, grab me another girl. I'm an after factory fixer. Yeah, like we did measure like six times. Yeah. That's impressive. I would have only measured once. Um, well, you know, we said, yeah, 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 it's like 88 inches. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you know those measurements only add up to 82, right? And I was like, huh. Huh. No, I didn't know that. It's about that. <laughs> well, now all they have to do is uh, put the molding on the side, on the roof, and seal it back up again. And the gentleman can have his, uh, the gentleman can have his fifth wheel back. Looks really good. I've never had one go that well before. Usually you got a good bow or a bubble somewhere. Or it's uh, out of square and so one side's a lot longer than the other side. Good work, Chad. Can I hold the camera here? Can you hold the camera? Hello. So I'm just gonna...